Hello and welcome to week three of Critical Thinking in Global Challenges. Last week, we've learned how to evaluate evidence given to support arguments or theories. We reviewed the different parameters to take into account to critically evaluate the credibility and relevance of the evidence given. Now that you are confident in evaluating evidence, this week we will learn how to assess arguments. The learning objective of this week are simply being able to understand and apply a key step to assess argument. Now, unfortunately, there is not one formula that I can give you for you to apply to then find out whether an argument is strong or weak. Instead, what I propose is to give you a step-by-step -step technique, a technique that summarizes all the key steps you need to look at, all the parameters you need to look at to be able to assess the argument correctly. This technique will help you to assess any argument regardless of the context. This technique has five steps, structure, clarity, evidence, logic, and evaluation. The first step is to look at the structure of the argument. Start by identifying the evidence and identify the concluding sentence or sentences. To identify the conclusion, look out for concluding words like thus, so, or therefore. Have a look at the following example. Can you identify the evidence? Can you identify the concluding sentence? Yes, indeed. The conclusion is here in red, while the evidence proceeds in green. The second step is looking at the clarity of the argument. Does it all make sense? Is it all clearly described? Is there any vagueness of confusion? The next step is a familiar one. You need to assess the evidence. As you learned to do last week, you need to assess the reliability and relevance of the evidence given to support the argument. As we've seen, you need to assess all of these parameters. The fourth step is to assess the logic of the argument. You should ask, is the argument sound? To do this, you need to be able to identify potential fallacies. A fallacy is a misleading or unsound argument. We distinguish two types of fallacies, the formal and the informal fallacies. Formal fallacies are invalid arguments due to mistake in the reasoning or the logic which occur independently from the actual content of the argument. They are simply invalid or unjustified deduction or conclusion. Informal fallacies are invalid arguments due to mistake in reasoning that are related to the content of the argument. Since informal fallacies are not linked with a logical error in the structure of the argument, we need to look closer at how the argument has been interpreted. Today we will focus on informal fallacies, as they are the ones that are the most often met in arguments around us, in media for instance. There are many varieties of informal fallacies. Here are some of the most common examples. The false dilemma fallacy, when an argument offers only two conclusions, when many more are possible. For instance, to lose weight, you should either stop eating fries or have liposuction. This is a fallacy, as many of the options are possible to lose weight such as taking up exercise, for instance. Another fallacy example is a one that correlation proves causation fallacy. Here, an argument assumes that when two events occur, one causes the other. For instance, whenever I clean my car, it rains. This is clearly a fallacy, as I don't have any power to make rain. Another very common fallacy is a cherry-picking fallacy. When an argument using supporting evidence selectively and contradicting evidence are simply ignored. For instance, claiming that climate change has stabilized by only looking at certain periods where little change has taken place rather than the longer term trends. Here are further fallacy. The ad hominem fallacy, which attacked the opponent rather than the argument. For instance, what does Professor Popper know about global warming? She drives a Range Rover. Another example is the appeal to motive fallacy, which questions the motive of the proposer to dismiss the proposer's point. For instance, of course Professor Popper says climate change is dangerous. She holds a chair of innovation in heuristic climate change modeling. Another example of informal fallacy is the appeal to emotion fallacy, which uses emotion rather than evidence. For instance, we must stop climate change or your children will drown under rising sea levels. And finally, the straw man fallacy, which misrepresents the opponent's argument. For instance, Professor Popper believes that an increase in rainfall will destroy crops. 
but if there was no rainfall, crops will not grow in the first place. There are many more types of fallacies, so make sure to have a look at the list of reading material provided this week, as it contains good link to good website on fallacies. But don't worry if you can't remember all the different types of fallacies. Don't worry if you can't say this is a strawman fallacy or this is a cherry picking fallacy. What's important is that you are able to recognize that an argument is a fallacy rather than what type of fallacy it is. Okay, so we've seen four steps out of our five steps technique. The last step is the most important evaluation. This is when you can conclude what you think of the argument. Taking all your findings from the four previous steps, you should now evaluate the argument. Is the argument clear and logically sound? Is the evidence given relevant and credible? Are you sure it does not contain fallacies? If so, well, the argument is likely to be a strong argument. However, if the answer is no, then the argument is a weak argument and its conclusion should be rejected, at least until better evidence is available. So this week, we've seen how to assess argument following a five-step technique. So make sure to check your understanding of those key steps by doing this week reviews exercise. And then it will be time to put in practice what you've learned in the past three weeks. To do so, we offer you four global challenges to choose from. In the theme obesity with Dr. John Menzies, you will look behind the headlines of recent news story on health and obesity. In the theme climate change with Dr. Richard Mile, you will investigate arguments in global warming. In the theme population, with Professor Mayang Jutia, you will investigate the dramatic increase in human population in the recent past. In the theme infectious disease, with Dr. Kim Pigozzi, you will investigate whether infectious disease are disease of the past. The choice is yours. You can just pick one challenge or do the four challenges. Please note that each exercise is accompanied by a background video on the selecting theme. So make sure to have a look at the video before attempting to do the exercise. So I hope you will enjoy doing the exercise. Good luck and see you next week.